right, are we ready? Yep. All right, I'll call the regular open spaces commission meeting to order for September 25th, 2023. Roll call. Commissioner Wilson. Here. Commissioner Appling. Commissioner Norton. Here. Commissioner Fox. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Wallen? Here. Mr. White? Here. Councilmember Harris? Uh, the Land Acknowledgement State. Flagstaff Open Spaces Commission humbly acknowledges the ancestral homelands of this area as indigenous nations and original stewards. These lands still inhabited by native descendants border mountains sacred to indigenous people. We honor them, their legacies, their traditions, and their continued contributions. And we celebrate their past, present, and future generations who will forever know this place as home. Yeah. And the approval of the August 28th meeting minutes. Are there any discussion or corrections? We send those out as a note. We send them out as minutes. The, the title. Should we send out that link? that link and then it would open up, you would find it as an open minutes. But I also send the, the document uh, that had it as a packet. Yeah. We're just using a different program now. Okay. So oh, I saw the doc. Yeah, it should have opened like everything was accumulated in there. So I do have some discussion. Um, on the document, document there are um, attributing to people to say um, I don't know if that's a good idea for it. For the same simple reason is you may not be able to capture what that individual said, and maybe. And so uh, often in minutes, there's no attribution to who said, said this was discussed or that was discussed. This was discussed. And as a result, if there is something that someone said, but isn't what they meant to say, even if they, they said it awkwardly, uh, by not having a name on there, that's, that's current. So I'm just, I'm just suggesting that. What I read a lot of minutes and they generally don't have names associated. But it's pretty that what he's suggesting is pretty cool. Works for me. Yeah. We can revise these current links and moving forward if that works for you too. Yes. That's technically I'm trying to as far as the sub substance of the meeting minutes. Uh, with that and with the um, suggestion of Mr. White, make those changes. Thank you for that. So, I will. <laughs> oh, I, I hear a motion to approve. Um, is there a second? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Be opposed. I'm just abstaining uh, since I wasn't here. Yeah. And <clears throat> meet the uh, minutes with our approval as, as amended. So at this time, we're down to public participation. Mr. Fox is here now for the record. So at this time, any member of the public may address the commission on any subject that is not scheduled before the commission on this day. The Arizona Open Meeting Law prohibits the commission from discussing or acting on an item which is not listed on the prepared agenda. Commission members may, however, respond to criticism made by those addressing the commission, ask staff to review a matter, or ask that a matter be placed on a future agenda. To address the commission, <coughs> on an item that is 
on the agenda, please wait for the chair to call for public comment at the time that the item is heard. Is there anyone here from the public that wishes to speak on a subject not on the agenda for tonight? Thank you, Greg. Would you mind addressing the changes in the agenda? Like, just explain from that to that. Um, so the program we're using is what the, a lot of other commissions, including city council, uses for communicating minutes and agendas through. Um, it's, it puts them all in one place and makes them much more accessible, and it's easier for staff to contribute and things like that. Um, so at this point, like it'll be me sharing a link to send you to. It's the agenda for um, what's the name of the site. Uh, the agenda.flagstaff.gov. Um, it's a courtesy I can send you directly to your specific agenda, but if you go to that that website itself, all current agendas are there and minutes as well. So that makes it so that you all can just view and then we can share all the like, same documents ahead of time there instead of sending you a bajillion emails. So would the documents just be attached so we open the agenda and then the links for the documents yeah. are be attached. Yeah, you would see see it right there. Um, I sent you this last time a packet that can still continue to send if that's preferred, but uh, I was doing that just as a courtesy to kind of transition you all to the website itself. So I think for me, like an email that says the agenda is posted with the attached documents would be really helpful so okay. I know when to look. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure, that will continue. Yeah, I mean, if you want to keep sending the documents, maybe someone else was like, they want them, but that looks Is there any questions about it? So, I'll expect an email. Mm -hmm. Next meeting's come up. Yep. And the attached agenda. Do you, I mean, if you guys want me to continue to attach an agenda to it, I can't, otherwise it would just be a link to the agenda. Um, just be a link to the yeah. agenda. So. But I can add that link, copy it yeah. into my files. Yep, you can yep. copy it and you'll be able to break it. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, you can actually download the whole PDF packet. I'm on the site right now because I didn't print up the agenda. So it's all there. You can print print agenda, download PDF packet. So it's all there. I still have a flip phone. <laughs> I guess that's it for public participation then. Um, and the business items, the first one is the open space terminology text amendment update. Yeah, thank you. So uh, if the commission remembers back uh, a couple of months ago, community development came in to discuss language within the code of the first open space. And they put together an amendment that will be moving forward for public hearing dates. Uh, October 11th is the PNZ Commission work session. October 25th, PNZ Commission public hearing. November 21st, public hearing first read. December 5th, Council public hearing second. And those uh, revisions, those amendments, uh, Revise the language for common open space, the common space, outdoor public open space to just outdoor public space, and then private open space to private space. I sent you that document if you wanted to kind of look at it, and if you have any thoughts about it, or am welcome to share those with me. I just wanted to provide you that update. It looked like a couple in a couple places they had added and civic space or something like that is that because i mean they're not just doing this for the open space commission they're doing this to like amend their documents for multiple right so it really has nothing to do with our definition of open right, space. right this is just within regard to developments and you know so it's talking about backyards and balconies and little pocket parks and okay that is so it's just it, it's not yeah. just us though they're, they're not just trying to move open they're trying to they're just trying to explain it up for everybody. So, you know, then like if we're asking for, okay, are you willing to talk about open space in a development? It's not going to be confused with 
what they're already planning in their development is. Yeah, and it's been an issue for a really long time because when I was on this commission a long time ago, it was also an issue. So that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. That was one of the great things they do, a really amazing compliment in place of the just said open space. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Then, then yes. Really, and you have to go back and try to figure out within context what we're really So it's like all their, I'll call it mini definitions fit into our definition of, as it, um, I always get the, uh, mixed up between the designated and the dedicated. It's almost like there's a dedicated to us. Right yeah, now. the space yeah. that we oversee the majority is that legally designated. So we get legally designated is Buffalo Park and all of that kind of thing. Dedicated is kind of deals with all of it. Yeah, our three designated properties are for getting with Miller Mesa and observe. Uh, it started, it begins to help clean it up, at least so there less confusion. So I had an interesting take to it, I think. Um, so I read it by the time, Fred, I read it maybe a little bit ago. I don't remember whether it had greater, this was for that particular order of development, whatever it's called now, but anyways. Um, did it have in the very beginning a definition of each of those three categories? I think that document does have a definition of those categories as well. Mm -hmm. um, I can pull it up here. I can pull it up here. Because I didn't, I don't remember a definition of what we're talking about as far as open spaces. And from a developer's point of view, if you read that, Seems like our kind of open space doesn't exist. Correct. Right. <laughs> and, and that that kind of that's the take I had that kind of bothered me. And how you might address it is up at the very top was definitions if it's not there. I just can't remember if it's there. So at least the developer would look at this and say, oh, this is another kind of open space. And I might just dedicate some of my money to it. Right. Just to give them that option. And I think that, I think you just hit the nail on the head. That within a development, we don't have a mechanism to require our kind <laughs> of open space. Um, and just to add on the civic spaces, that's how we worked with them to still show what the public spaces are without calling it open space anymore. And that they they needed some sort of language to show like it's a public gathering space now to be used by the public, but not call it open space. If that because some of those spaces are required by development codes. Right. So they have to have like an area like this and they might put a fire ring in there and some barbecue pits and call that open space, but we can't because that's right not now it will be called civic space. Yeah. Or like community meeting rooms or you know, community and um, shared ramadas and barbecues and lawns and things like that. So we're not adding open space language into the development code, which is what you want. Because well, again, <laughs> it's not, you just have the definition up there. It's a, something to think about. <laughs> it's a note, you know. Okay. And and I don't know how we would, uh, how we would define our kind of open space other than that it's space owned by the city, but I don't know that it's defined by area two of the amount. Whether it's defined by the amount and access to it, public access to it, or you know, all those little detailed things about defining something. I don't know. It's something to think about, at least for me to think about. At the very end, a lot of documents they get amended, they put the D, and then they might say this was amended because not quite that language, but they'll just say to clarify terminology. So if I had any input on it, that's what I would say. Definition up there. 
And we, we can certainly provide that feedback and the reason why, but my guess is this being a zoning code document without that kind of open space required, they would probably push back against the definition because yeah. it's then not used anywhere in the code. So define anywhere the zone codes. So what I would suggest is like when it comes to public hearing in front of PNC, which is the next stage, this is where I would advocate for that. This is where it would be a good place to have it. us speak at that, like make a great of you to the PNC hearing and that was the best they want, you know. I would do it in the sure. When is the next one? I think it's not. I just found out about it because of what we're talking about today. I guess it's a little. Is that Is that? 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 So um, this this item then the zoning code text amendment with the terminology as a we're good with how they're making those particular changes. Oh. Defining common space. <clears throat> Is the commission going to provide an informal recommendation to community development to provide a definition of open space in there? Is that is that what I heard? The commission. No, we can do it either way. We can do it as an advice to community development or to Tiffany, she's zoning code manager, Tiffany Antal, um, on behalf of the entire our commission, in addition to or in lieu of. I can I would also advocate for us on our behalf when it comes up for discussion in PNZ um, or any public speakers or private letters about it. Um, if the commission really to just read the note saying what I was trying to say, and then you also carry that, and I think that would be sufficient. And there's a if it doesn't happen, then it's, that's okay. But by doing that, by sending the letter, it puts the commission on PNZ on notice that we're watching. <clears throat> We want to be involved. That's a better way of saying mm -hmm. not watching. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of agree with that only because we know all that feedback from the public survey about what do people want and they really want that open space. Then, you know, maybe as the open space commission, we should just you know, put the reflection that we hear from the community. It's not totally within the codes of the things that you're doing, but open space is really important. And it may not, you know, have a lot of weight. In a development that doesn't come for a rezone or something right. like that, it's just a, a buy right development because they're just going to follow the code. Um, but when there is a rezone and there is that opportunity for negotiations, it might be good to have that little reminder in there that you know this is always a concern available to you as a developer to designate some open space. Uh. So my follow-up, my takeover work will be to email community development. The commissioners are in agreement that we want a definition explaining what legally does in open spaces in this testament. Is that correct? We suggested. <laughs> yeah. We're also kind of asking or suggesting that they provide a written definition of their new terms. I don't know. I was looking through that. I did, I did see this. Like, if you look here, this is common space we hear. So, this is the minimum amount of area 
within a development intended or reserved for the use and enjoyment of all owners and occupants, et cetera. Um, so it does look like there are definitions for the terms that there are many okay. in this document, but not for legally designated. Okay. Great. Any agreement on that, then? All right. Uh, item B Water Services Reliability Roundtable Company. Yeah, this was an item that the commission was invited to attend by Water Services. And I believe we'd have a couple of commissioners come. Commissioner, Commissioner Fox and Commissioner Fox. Yeah. So I'll let you. And Commissioner Fox is having trouble with his microphone. He might provide some input via the chat. Well, uh, if you're good with the uh, Commissioner Fox, I'll, I'll go and just kind of run through that presentation that was given to us by Water Services and then can jump in if I've forgotten something or anything you want to add. Just going to kind of go through the highlights of the, the presentation itself. And um, there's a, and they actually did provide us with a water commission report that has all kinds of details. They didn't really talk about it in great detail, but it's available if anybody wants to, to read it and look at it. But basically in the presentation, um, I started out by saying, you know, you know, what is the most important for, for users? Um, was it to keep it clean, keep it flowing, care for the environment, um, efficiency, dollar savings? You know, you can look at, at water in, in many different ways. And, you know, they're asking, you know, what is most important to you? Uh, they talked about the water supply having, you know, 100 years of adequate water. Um, the question came up, you know, how do you know that? You know, it talked about, um, you know, continuous analysis and, and, and looking at all variables to try to make sure that that's the case. Um, wastewater reclamation, in that regard, they uh, telling, you know, that they are producing A plus water. Um, from the from the wastewater reclamation, um, the question did come up about uh, turning it into drinking water. Uh, if I understood it correctly, Arizona really doesn't have any uh, standards and rules as far as that's concerned that they can work towards. Um, stress the importance of maintaining the water flow into the wetlands. Kind of what um, I, I kind of stressed a little bit. Um, they talked about the uh, 2025 strategic plan issues, challenges, um, some of which include, you know, the capacity of the wild hill, wildcat hill plant, um, being able to protect the system from wildfires, upgrade the stormwater system, and create increased maintenance. Part of their strategic plan is to accelerate infrastructure maintenance and replacement and plan for climate change and to maintain you know their, their a plus excellent water quality um, and also one of the uh, another major issue for them is uh, addressing the the workforce issues uh, keeping uh, their workforce you know their knowledge, their, their knowledge, uh, and just actually keeping people trained and on, on the job. Um, some of the current challenges were, are, that they talked about with the aging system and a lot of deferred maintenance. Um, they feel uh, technology, technologically, that they're somewhat behind industry standards and you know, uh, again, uh, one of the big current challenges is the personnel shortages, keeping experienced and certified, uh, certified staff. So they did show us uh, some uh, uh, 
pie charts of unfunded capital. Question was asked, you know, whether the unfunded uh, capital is currently increasing or decreasing. And uh, it, it's definitely increasing as opposed to increasing. Uh, they listed a, uh, several wastewater and stormwater project, projects in progress. And um, the bond, uh, the money that they got from the recent bond, bond, bond issue has helped somewhat, um, especially with some of the current projects that they're doing. Um, they talked about how they get their, you know, some of their funding, project funding through partnerships, with, like with the um, Army Corps, the Bureau of Reclamation, federal and state allocations, FEMA, EPA, Department of Fire and Forestry, and several um, other groups like that. And Basically, then they provide you know a copy of the water plan, which goes into a lot more detail. So the presentation was basically really high level, you know, just some of what they're doing and some of their concerns, and, uh, what they what they need as far as the funding and stuff like that. I didn't go into any any details on. Actual rates and stuff for stormwater and all that, you know, any of those issues. It's just more of a high level. So basically, that was it. And Commissioner Fox wants to add anything. It's not rare. <laughs> so, no, so. so that's basically all I had to say say about that. It was interesting. Uh, we both took a tour of the facility after the after the presentation. It was was interesting to see what all goes what all is involved in, in the, that process. If I could thank you for attending <laughs> on behalf of this commission. Pros was very well represented from what I understand. It was the two of you and two, maybe three parks and rec commissioners. Um, and I'm not sure there was much more. How many attendees do you think there was? Well, there was three of us at the meeting we went to. So yeah. Commissioner Fox and one other person. So well, thank you. Was there any was there any discussion about water as far as areas outside of the city limit? No, I don't recall. It seems to be a more and more impactful, I would think. I was worried about the city limits and the pressure that way back in the 80s, provide water outside the city limits with city water. Thanks. Yeah, that's a, this, that they did come up in the presentation. I, I had a question too. Were there next steps for, is, is this a one in a series or? Mm -hmm. They, they just, you know, not really the next steps. Um, just uh, stay informed and uh, a couple of websites that you can get information from. And then, you know, they wanted the, the uh, what our perspective was on what was presented. Like I said, maybe some of that detail about, you know, the actual amount of water and all that might be in this report. I don't kind of read through it yet. So. But it wasn't discussed presentation. Well, I just had a question. There's a big massive pipeline being put in at the San Francisco going up across Nito Road and up to the development of that. It's going all the way up to the into a storage tanks by the museum. And there's a rumor 
going around because in order to get those pipelines through there, I'm guessing the city had to get efficient I don't know. Is that the urban trail might go on top of it? Which impacts are those us? That's my own. That's this is, I think, a little outside of the discussion. So I'll keep, I'll keep uh, reading, I just but... wanted to think about that uh, for about projects. I can comment on that just briefly, though. Uh, that topic did come to the commission here in the past. Uh, there is a dedicated section of open space that's part of Buffalo Park with that pipeline, the replacement pipeline, which one of mine runs through. Uh, they did have to get easements to go through private property. I think there is interest in a Urban trail system, but it is not coupled with this. Step, so. This open just the commissions, or was this roundtable open to organizations outside of? I think it was intended to reach out to commissioners only. Not that they're not doing other outreach as well. <laughs> Item C, the November December combined meeting plan. Yeah, uh, thanks for reminding me about this last meeting. So, the Commission of the Passives typically combine their November December meetings, but they typically fall over holidays. In fact, our Monday meeting in December will be on Christmas Day. Because you guys don't have that. <laughs> um, so uh, I'll cancel that meeting and we could rearrange the November meeting uh, to accommodate both or, you know, if you really wanted to, we could select a different date for December and have both November, December meetings, whatever is preferred. Uh, so I prepared a couple of options, just sticking with Monday since that's the typical day that we meet. Uh, we could keep our Monday, November 27. Uh, which is the first Monday after Thanksgiving. So I feel like something might be traveling then, but uh, there's also Monday, December 4th and Monday, December 11th. So we could rearrange it if we want to stick with Monday. And those are the dates I picked since I did conflict with Parks and Recreation. So do we have to stick with Monday? No, you know. We can stick with Monday. Uh, Personally, I'd like to go out. That's 11? Yeah, 11. Sorry. So there works for me. Same here. And I have no complex on any of those dates, so I don't really have to go We have three commissioners that Monday, December 11th, we work with for. And Commissioner Fox. Do you have a preference? Did anybody else want to propose another day? So it would be one meeting for November and December. That's what we could do. That's, I think, traditionally what the commission has done in the past. That doesn't necessarily mean we have there have been times that we just rearranged the November, December meetings to different dates. So it looks like um, the Monday, December 11th is not good for Christian. <clears throat> it's good. It's good. It's good. Monday, and then, oh, it is good. Just go with Monday. So that's what you thought. Yeah. Okay. So Monday, December 11th will be the combined meeting for November, December. Is that correct? Okay. Great. That was easy. Do you send out an invite? Don't you send out an invite? Yes. Uh, Corinne recently canceled the invite and then re sent out the invite. So you should have a new invite for all the meetings in succession. Uh, 
So you can update the invite, and so she'll send the update the invite. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's one thing that I don't know if she mentioned this when she was updating you about the change for agenda quick, but the link that is for our meeting should be the same for every meeting now. Okay. So I have been updating it for every single agenda, but I think you can utilize the same one. I mean, maybe you said it to me, but I never said yes. I didn't get. I don't. I didn't think I got one for this meeting either. I just sent a regular email that I would be here. But anyway. So it's so better here. for her to send. Well, she'll send an updated link for the yeah. For the she doesn't have to do a new November December meeting and then in January when we're back on schedule it'll be a, a series of appointments for each month with that we'll all have the same teams like yeah I'll ask you to send a calendar right? so we still we still have October 23rd and then the council meeting update is the 31st and then we'd be December 11th All right, move on to item D, prior prioritization multi year project plan. Oh, yeah, you recall something first? That's okay. Oh, maybe just in case we need that question. Uh, do, do you mind if we switch the council update to the next version? Okay. So the council update plan. Uh, this is in. Uh, this is for your update to the council that is going to be placed on the 31st of October. And I put a few slides together and a few basic talking points uh, that I sent out to all of you. And I know some of you provided a little bit of feedback, and I tried to incorporate some of that. So I thought maybe we could just do go through the slides first, and then we could go through some of the talking points and see if you. Uh, these are the basic slides uh, that I can get it for you. Feel free to let me know if I have changes. I need to add this. Commissioner Wilson is going to do the presentation to City Council. Okay. Yes, you can attend. Wow. Just <laughs> that. Okay. This is uh, typically City Council likes to have an annual update from the commissions. They ask this if you're available. Next time. <laughs> These are the topics that will be discussed. The Commission's authority on point projects, recent accomplishments, future uh, projects, um, and recommendations to help. I have one suggestion. Yeah. To change, um, start with the authority and then go to recent accomplishments. Just go back into different order. Recent accomplishments, ongoing projects, future projects, and information. Okay. Um, the slide about the authority. Uh, this is our mission and then uh, city code authority. Um, as far as the presentation is concerned, when the slide like that comes up, um, City Council might read the first sentence or so. So the presentation has to be clever enough to bring out the important points quickly. Yeah, in fact, um, this, this is a very wordy slide. I think I'm happy to change it. You could take off all the authority city code. Which works for me. Leave only the mission statement on there, put on a pretty picture of open space and plans or something. And um, Commissioner Wilson will speak to all Well, very briefly speak to all <laughs> Yeah, you don't even need to read the mission, you just need to reference to briefly to the code. Uh, 
Okay. There was a slide, some brief commission history. Um, wait, wait, wait. Yep. What's the common space, private space, open space? What does that mean? Are those the historic terms that have been used for the agency? Yeah, this is the recent, uh, yeah, this is the recent change. Um, when at one of our prior open space meetings, I think the one that we went to Schultz Creek, this comment was something that was made by, yeah. by us, by the commission at that point, and they thought that that would be important to share that history. I just put it on there. Well, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're a city council member. I think they appreciate the fact that things are happening in the code mm -hmm. and things, not with a lot of discussion or presentation, but there is a difference between those. It's really important for a council member to have. Um, these are just can you, why was the open space program founded in 1998? Was there a public, was there a public drive for representation in the city? Or like what, what drew the open space program? So when the open space and greenways plan was developed in 1998. Um, I don't know the spirit of that. I'm just wondering, like, is this commission the reflection of, is this commission the reflection of desires of the community? Is this reflection, is the community, is this commission response? Like planning and zoning is because people wanted to have control over what happens within a local open space is because the general public wanted to have open space. Like I just want to, it might be, you just want to really like tie it to the people. Yeah. Yes, yes, and there was something before that, but in 1996, there was Vision 2020 and the chamber and F cubed and several other organizations got together and did a, 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 almost a year effort trying to find out what flight staff wanted to be like and what was important. And one of the things that came out of that was the importance of open space. Okay. And but there's things before that, but I think that was a, a, a inflection point. And then after that, uh, above that time, the Greenways, which I know is a base. A little bit, very good, uh, was developed. And then we had council members in 2000 that were really behind open space as a so city council members, city council members that kind of kept the ball rolling. And in fact, it was city council. When did this? When was the commission formed? 2004. 2003. Three. Yeah, I think that was on there. Uh, um, what was her name? She became director of basis for a while. Uh, oh, Kara Kelty. Kara, 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 Kara Kelty. And I think it was another person. Uh, all right, that I think was on. And so they took that ball. And we also had in 2000, also the reason of planning was working. That had a significant amount of open space in it. So it was about the young things that came together. So I think just telling that story and not reading the slide alone is just all you need to say. But and because someone, I was reading the slide as Matt was talking, and I can figure out what he's talking about. Not necessarily about the, the years in particular, but the history, it's like why this is important. Well, you can say that you need to get the sheet out for the end, but the history behind it. That's Good picture. So, the, the, so in 98 was after that's when the program, it's open space program. Came about was um, as a result of that Greenways plan, and that plan was um, a memorandum of understanding, you know, between the city, Forest Service, Park Service, and the counties. And then the commission became came into the staff wise, John Sleeve and Ursula Montoya were the central people pushing. 
Free Russia, the central people who are pushing the post trail, they can be contacted. Yeah, I'll try to put the talking points up side by side, although uh, I'd be a little squished here. <clears throat> and these are just to help get the conversation started. Um, oh, you've got talking points there. Yes. Yeah, so I can, I can just go back to these. Okay. I started to look at the so just remember, you got 30 minutes. <laughs> I think we already start our discussion at 5.15 about how to bring us to the And I mean with counsel. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not your timekeeping. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Um, I have to go check, but it's typically just 15 minutes. Yeah. 15, 20 minutes. So, short to Thanks. So, that's a good point. <clears throat> we have 15 minutes. Um, it would be good to jot down very most important human being points that we get through. And that might happen in the beginning and get repeated a couple of times. And it might not exactly go with the slide, but it's up at that point. Point. I think if I were a council member, uh, I'd want to know why the commission is important. Your statement. This commission reflects balance of our community. Or open space and not and the open space and then the violent passive renovation. I think there's a couple of terms about why people want open space wildlife in sanity. I, I, I think it is that people are interested in that and it comes up in several slides. One is as a bond. Well that's what yeah, that's, that's the second most important point that people's bond is in our community. And the third most important point is that we are responding as a commission to our community. Some of those clients, and those are the three. Those are three. Those are. Those are. Three. I don't know. I mean, for me, to carry on. Yeah, on, this, on, this commission on. was created Why? by the community. This commission is funded by the community, or you know, plans, and this commission responds to the community. It was then, 25 years ago, it still is now. Yeah, still and done. he moved right into his current planning for Observatory Mesa. It explains what we've done in past projects, explains current projects, and it just explains the desire of future projects. And, and, and that may be incorporated under the, the slide talking about community goals and the benefits of the community. That's the very next slide. Yeah. So, mm. What were the three main points in this one of the commissions? Commission is created by the community. The commission, responds to the, the, commission is created by the, the commission is funded by the community. There are bonds passed to fund open space. It's the second one. <clears throat> Shows up there, and but the thing just keeps coming through. So you want the council member very probably thinking, maybe. Um, yeah, we should throw some funding your way. Yeah, yeah. We should we should ask for some <laughs> legally designated open space from people when we can. You wanted those points at the site for it, so. Well, I think the goal was to say those bullet points at the beginning, say those bullet points in the middle, and say those bullet points. Some of these pictures uh, and, and the words on um, just up, uh, flow into. Here's another example of these three points. Here's another example of these three points. And so you talk about the different. This goes in different slides. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a presentation. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Good. I'm just not sure exactly what you need to change, but I'll I'll just run through the rest of it and we can yeah. come back. Uh, so that was slide four. That's open space history, community goals and benefits. Uh, is slide five. Slide six is the open space system vision. Yeah. We can try to the No, you're okay. Uh, slide seven, uh, upholding the PDP um, in other goals. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what is that? This one lost me, frankly. This, I don't even know what that means. This is the city council's like primary vision objectives. Okay. So I tried to highlight the boxes that open space kind of has a tie to to show them that we're, our work ties in to like their goal. And that is the perfect slide to flow into the three <clears throat> points that we're talking about. <clears throat> projects, um, recent, recently accomplished projects. Um, I added this slide recently. Current commission projects, future commission projects, recommendations for city council, and then nothing. Uh, False slides. False. Yes. Oh, so, that a minute. So, <laughs> yeah. um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We can start with the top three Yeah, it almost requires a script. It, um, so, it's slide it's one here. I just label as an introduction. Slide two, uh, what discussion topics you're gonna discuss at the, yeah, for them. Slide three is more background, the commission's authority. Slide four is that, that history, so open space terms, how open space has evolved, where we are today, the three main points. Slide five, is the community goals and benefits that open space the commission brings. That could include uh, mentioning open space strategic plan, describing the importance of the community, to the community. Um, slide six is the vision, that's the map. How the vision upholds the goals and objectives. Slide, uh, I guess that, that's the addition of accomplishments. Slide eight, the current commission projects, the uh, trail plan, the prior release in the 2004 bond plan. Future commission projects, so that's the list that we came up with the other day. And recommendations for your conclusion. So. Maybe, um, maybe we should spend less time on. I just, I just looked at the quantity of language, maybe just a little less time on future projects and more on like current <clears throat> projects. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I know that we're trying to, you know, be in a place to ask for more money, but just look thinking about, yeah, I mean, future projects, that's our dream list, you know. <coughs> yeah. yeah. It's important to put up there, but I'm not, you know, I, I don't know. It sounds like you've already discussed it, so. But there's one project that might be worth mentioning, and it is uh, the uh, observatory Mesa project, and that could be used again as a tool of emphasizing why the commission is important for the space to follow. A great deal of interest following up on what taxpayers pay for. Again, that might be, it's not a future project, but an ongoing project. Could be a segue into again the Okay, so slide three here in the Commission of Authority. I have a little direction. Is there any other additions you want to on this actual slide? On which on this slide number three, the uh, open space authority. Just the mission and then talk the points by control. Slide four is the history. Um the, were there changes to this specific slide? Yeah, the history can be really quite brief. 
Uh, but it would, I think the point that it would be is that it has a history that's gone over several decades. Okay. Any physical changes to the slide, or do you want to keep the text as it is? Robert, I just emailed you when Stacy Bobart presented about the two commissions in May. He stated that we formed the voting discussion in person in 2007. And you got 2003. So I'm sure we're on the same page. That's when the official commission went in. I think so, yeah. And how did the bond, so the bond to fund initiatives pass before there was a commission? So, as I recall, open space priorities were covered with the Parks and Recreation Commission for a long time, and then they were split up in 2007, is my understanding. Oh, okay, that's where it was. Just double check it. Yeah. I pulled up her presentation and checked before I sent you the email. Any other changes this particular slide? Do we want to limit the language on here? It doesn't matter. I don't. I mean, what, do they need to know that the city council approved the open space position and that the city council approved the second open space position? I'm just trying to take the results. Yeah. So, and maybe, maybe it's just a, a now we've, you know, we've, now we have two dedicated positions, you know, staff position council, just make up the, you know, versus the white position. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. There are three positions. I mean, yeah. I'm just, just trying to get words off the slide. Yeah. So there's two inputs to the council. So they'll see what the words are saying and what they're glancing at the screen. So, um, I think having the most relevant information on the screen there, but it, even if it's if it covers too much, uh, if it's factual, it's in there. The wording, the presentation, can put the envelope around it without hitting the detail. So a council member who Fast reader might look at that and that might go in his head or her head while the other oral part is coming in. So uh, I think the important thing is the oral part is really clear. I, I don't know. So, I agree. Well, yeah, kind of yeah, point. Maybe take on the common space, private space, open space. We can talk about it, open space terms. Yeah. Uh, language is on there. I'm sure both of you talk about it. Yeah. I'm just trying to reduce. I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, and I'm fine with whatever you guys want to put up there. Well, <laughs> so yeah. if you want to take all this language off and you just want to keep it to talking points, you could do that. Either, you know, no, I, I don't necessarily need to just that. Some verbiage is good. I tend to agree with Matt. You know, just you know what they're hearing and what they're reading. You know, it's kind of a way to hit them twice. You know, right. and double dip a little bit. I think it's. It's okay. As long as they can read it. If it's so congested you can't read it, then it's not really doing much. Having sat at the dice, it's hard to read a screen. So unless somebody is looking at it prior to their meeting, they may not be able to read things that are real small. But you know, bullet points like that, yeah. they can read those. You can read those. Um, I think some council members actually pull up their packets on their computers while they're up there, so that's helpful. But I know like when we're at, sit up there for P and Z, it's almost impossible to read what's on the screen. Unless, as you said, unless it's big. Yeah. Only just a timeline. 1998, this is what happened. 2004, this is what happened. 2007, this is 2015, this is what happened. 2023, this is what happened. Then you put all the dates in the beginning. When was the grant decision? 2006. Uh, 
22. I don't know. Thank you. There you go. Perfect. And pop in the word separate. So it doesn't be part of its simplest of the bullet points. Oh no, the bullet points, the bullet points are great, but like move over the word separate, open space bond initiatives underneath the voter score group two. Just move that over to the right. All right. So it doesn't look like it's part of the yeah. Just make the box bigger than this one. And you might put open space terms at the very bottom. And you can put 2023 open space terms and we can help Dr. Wilson. Commissioner Wilson, you could say, you know, some of the things that we've been addressing in the P and Z terms, here's some of the open space terms. You could just kind of think of the terms. And how it goes into. <clears throat> Yeah, because he has these things. Thoughts on this next slide? Or are we good with that? Yeah, I think that's a good example of okay, they can be looking at that while they're hearing what's going on right. and not be lost in trying to understand each of those things. Okay. Good. I know we have some comments about this one. Yeah. Um, I does that the, thing is the open space system vision. Um, how are you going to? I, I'm I'm glad that you made uh, those uh, state lands over there. I know. I was like, aren't there state lands? <laughs> yeah. That, that, we want some. Uh, that they're a slightly different color, uh, because I was afraid that you know, that would lead people in the wrong direction as to what our vision is. All those 648 square mile sections. Could be open space, no, uh, but open space in those areas might be important. But um, basically, it looks like those lines follow the urban trail system. Uh, they mostly follow like floodways, drainages, places where it's hard to develop. And places where it's already developed. Is that what you said? No. <laughs> so lines, uh, lines are um, supposed to be connecting corridors that help connect the different. Yeah, I just noticed the error on this, I think. Um, but they're supposed to be like travel corridors in between the regional preserves. Uh, I, I, I did notice an error. I think like at one point when we talked about priorities, we talked about, you know, there would be more of like a trail connector in between like more tough up and the southeastern portion of like that. Uh, I can see if I can update that or find that. I, I guess I, I, I read the title of the slide, Open Space System Vision. And then the legend says these green areas are open space. But then we have all these lines going off in different directions. Uh, I guess I, 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 didn't, I was confused. Maybe the title changed. I can add yeah. some clarity here. 
when the commission, and this was over the last couple of years, it might have been before you were on the commission. Definitely. They prioritized um, potential ac land acquisitions mm -hmm. so that we can, so we as staff know like which, when an opportunity arises, which land acquisition do we go for first? Much of that is about connectivity and the goal for a 10 minute access to natural areas and parks, that this is natural areas for the entire community. The blue lines might be foots, corridors, or things that help get us there so that people can easily access natural areas. And then the blue squares, the state land you were mentioning on the bottom right, are important because there's a lack of open space available in that area. So those, that's why those are priorities. So that's what the map is intended to show the vision of the commission's acquisition priorities that will help meet the 10 minute access goal. Did I say that right, Robert? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. No, good summary. I recall, I, th I thought a lot of those blue lines followed like the Rio de Flag, especially down yeah. below the 40, you know, I think it, Which it is just, typically where Fitz trails are as well. Right, where we would want them to be or um, as those areas are developed, you know, I'm thinking of those parcels south of the 40 that, you know, we have our eye on for, as those are developed, you know, that there's going to be some open space and certainly foot's connectivity in there. Uh, What's the point of this? I mean, what? And so are we trying to say as a commission and as five staff is growing, <laughs> we want open space to be a part of the discussion? Is that what the slide's about? I think potentially could share that message. Yeah, yeah. I've actually been thinking about the land um, association because it sucks. It's like how to connect that material. Um, that's the vision that my understanding is. Could be done verbally too. You know, let's say let's have a visual. Um, yeah. The state land isn't developed at all. So open space. And it can be. It will be. If you were to say in words, oh, these, but then you start to use more words than I think you have. But you say these state lands here, these are state lands. They're undeveloped now, but there needs to be consideration of open space in those areas when they do develop. Uh, that's, that's a lot of wordy. And then you've got these connections that are going up, up the Mount Elden Trail. I mean, up the uh, Elden Road, Mount Elden Road. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put myself in, in yeah. the place of a councilman. Sure. Saying, I mean, we could just insert something like looking to get crew open space in this particular area, like that, in this office. Quadrant. You know, it might be simple to, to take it out the word vision and explain it verbally what actually that the one Rebecca said in how many years that we have. We are thinking and working on what actually that we vision about this and what actually we want to be. Maybe these are like target areas, I don't know if that's the right word, or watch areas, you know. Um, and explaining in wording, not necessarily in title. I think it is a really good idea to say these areas are in space. However, what we think of the future of Flagstaff's growth. These areas, which I know are squares, are, you know, just areas that, as the Open Space Commission, we are interested in maintaining or trying to maintain this open space. And we just want the city council to think about these things. I mean, that's, you know, because that is a political dogfight right there. Right. And a lot of them. So you do want the city council to be aware of that. And this is a great example of. 
the inequality of open space access and open space management for the city of Blackstaff. Sure, there's forest service over on the right hand side, there are a bunch of canoe juniper and a couple of national monuments, but that's not managed by the city of Blackstaff. And if we're providing, providing quality to all our residents, then we just want to make you aware that this could be open borders. Could there be a slide instead of this slide? Not necessarily a map, but open space, a vision of open space would be uh, connections between various open spaces. And maybe the picture would be a connection between McMillan Mesa uh, open space, not the Buffalo Park, and connection to some other, well, Actually, can make the land of the place. You can make the park. That's a long ways to go. Our vision is to make, because you said this, Robert, I, it's quick in my head is purpose is to show our vision is to have open spaces connected. And then rather than showing a map that might get all confused, at least in my mind, to show an example. So I think it's important to show that the vision is to provide more open space, yeah. especially on the east and the south side, which doesn't exist today. So I think, you know, not just connecting what we have, but also vision is to, you know, create yeah. more to pro provide that 10 minutes access and you know equity to you know, the underserved areas of town so yes i look at the blue lines and i i have it up on my computer blew it up and enlarged it you know they do especially south of the 40 they, they do follow you know the bow and arrow wash the pine canyon uh wash rio de flag um all of that and you know these are all environmentally sensitive areas that as this whole area down there gets developed, we want to preserve with open space, certainly for foot access. Um, but then there, there's also that flaw right there that was that Hoffman tank that we've talked about before. So um, in, in my mind, sometimes these are also, like I said, environmentally sensitive areas. And certainly those state lands that are near Walnut Canyon fall under that same purview. I see this as a planning map rather than a city council map. And, and, and thank you. Finding an example, and maybe even examples of uh, 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 the extension of power and say, for example, No open space plan here. Or there could be several pitches. Open space with a connector, open space, no black no open space. Like, anyways, I, I see the map is confusing. I think one of the interesting things when we talk about open space is how it can be in such urban areas. Like when they designed that pedestrian vehicle bridge to go over the railroad tracks in 66, and we've talked about the fact that the south side doesn't open space like i think i think that that's the important like i'm not i'm just speaking out loud but like the fact that pre-planning would be really helpful so then not that we're not post-planning things that could be really expensive to try to get an open space sort of concept in underneath the bridge for the south side to have access to open space within 10 minutes you know, but if, so that's the vision you're just trying to prepare for that but those blue squares. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you probably was involved, and I was involved with those things in the Walnut, protection of Walnut Canyon, and all that kind of thing. Um, I think it's just a whole lot of different impressions of what those squares represent in people's minds. I just think we're just highlighting the inequality of access to urban spaces. So. Um, is it okay if I move on? 
I was just going to say one other. Yeah. As opposed to showing those specific, you know, state trust plans, I mean, the whole idea would be the box or circle, and, you know, encompasses the, just the unserved, underserved areas of town that are looking to, you know, possibly. Like, Josh, I think it's the whole thing. This area here is. Under, yeah. Is underserved and the blue squares can scan the blue squares, but at least cover the whole area. Yeah. Vision is to provide something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> almost 20 after. You want to spend additional time on this? You made it amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other, like, Larry, things that you want to change. No, I, I feel like good. some of this discussion we can continue over to the Yeah. Uh, so I'll make the changes that we talked about thus far. Uh, you can send it back out via email and we can provide them. Yeah. So just one quick thing. Yeah. On slide seven, where you know we're talking about the PDG and the goals. Okay. You mentioned this the city lives in doesn't have a strategic plan that this is what they go by more or less in lieu of a strategic plan. Becca, do you have any thoughts on it? So I think for the council's priorities and objectives, and that directs us as staff for budget, hence priority-based budget. Um, in terms of a city strategic plan, I mean, I think you're going to talk about the regional plan. And, you know, that's really what the city council's strategic plan is, is trying to ensure that staff are following those visions that are already established. And this is a way that we get there. So Robert asked me that question last week. And it, I can't think of anything that's just a city council or city strategic plan and it's these planning documents that are the vision of where they want to um, And then these are the funding priorities. And I don't want to guess that we live by a daily. That's good that we touch so many. And that's the point of this slide. The, sli the yeah. point of the slide is not to read what's inside those boxes. The point is to see how many yellow squares there are. And it can't how many yellow squares are like 18 out of the council is uh, updating these <laughs> 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 but um, from the version that Robert and I have been able to review so far, they're just that the intent of each of the boxes is not changing, just some the way that words are rearranged or um, it's changing, so I think we're still big. Yes. And it's important to see too that it hits every category, which not very many programs can say that yeah. in the city. Yeah. We use this slide a lot. <laughs> Any other thoughts about this? Uh, well, I'll try to make some of those changes and uh, we can put our heads together about the top of it. Uh, and we can send this back out for your review. And then in October, at your October meeting, we'll have to make a decision of approving this because that uh, is not good. And uh, the CP or our city clerk did <clears throat> confirm we have 30 minutes for this presentation. She recommended about 20 minutes of talking and 10 minutes for questions. All right, and I would recommend we skip down to the zone term is the I am tough. Mark is here. So we will go to the item F, which is the observatory Mesa trail plan. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Uh, well, you all had a chance to look at some of the material that we sent you in advance. Uh, Mark and his team worked on providing a synthesis uh, of the public comments that we received and the different themes for each of those categories. And so we thought we would start with that synthesis and you know, review it and see if there's any, any comments, particularly on the first theme and the general background. And then we could hopefully talk about themes two through seven at the future. And is this a document that disappeared? Do you want to join us? Sure, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Everybody, you want to get more for the U.S. Sure, so the Basically, what we what we're attempting to do with this report is to distill it down the, to the best of our ability to make it a little bit easier to understand. And so a lot of that comes with trying to understand the like trends and themes. We had no themes going into the original review of the comments. They were they were revealed by the comments, um, not necessarily by, you know, X amount or a certain volume of comments, but things and trends that we felt were being expressed by more than one individual that like definitely had merit for calling out in a specific way. And so that's why you see the themes that you see there. And then it does end with theme seven other, right? There were a few comments um, here and there about things that just didn't quite fit into uh, the buckets or the themes that we were providing. And so trying to provide as much context to the the types of like the balance of comments that we received basically and so some of them are synthesized and some of them are direct quotes it's kind of depending on how many comments we received and the more comments we received the more synthesizing we did on said theme and sub themes so that's a little bit of the, the context behind the report itself um the goal was to have the report shorter than it is i believe it's 23 pages long we were hoping that it would be easier to digest than it is, but but here we are. So I'm going to apologize right now for the lengthy document that you have. I think it does a nice job summarizing like what has happened and what were the decisions that we're working on trying to make for the final product. Though. So I think that all of the pages are actually necessary. They ended up being that way. Yeah, best of intentions. Ended up being 23 pages. Yep. Yeah, so were there initial thoughts about this synthesis? So the plan for the synthesis will actually be a help guide us in the revisions and the process here with the commission, but also to make this publicly available through the community park site as a summary of the work that we've done and a summary that we provide council when we participate. Um, do we're to look at this and possibly add some edits or suggestions that this will be become a public document? Yeah. So this we need to make this into a public comp document. We need to make this into a document that the public can understand. <clears throat> Is that is that our end? Is that what where we're at? This since this is meant to provide a summary of what we've done mm -hmm. during the development of the trim plan mm -hmm. and give an indication of the changes that we've made for the public. Yes. Um, and we do have like these summaries of the surveys that we've done mm -hmm. that are listed on the 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 five cent community form. So those are publicly available already. Yeah. This is like more a <clears throat> summary of all of that. So this first, the first survey that we put out, the second survey, and the direction that we're taking based on the feedback we've got. 
So are you asking us for input on, yeah, on how this looks to the public or to like how to restructure it or like or are we supposed to be offering our recommendations based on this input from the public? I guess I, I well the, the, the input already we we're just talking, yeah, we're not gonna make any change. I think we're we I don't know. We don't we're not evaluating this. I, I guess I'm confused too as to what you're asking us to do with it. I think any like, changes on the structure of this document are fine. Like, so if you have recommendations on the structure of this, and then we are going to use this document also for uh, spearheading some of the discussions for altering the plans. So that's what yeah. Okay. Yeah, to help provide context for the discussions. Okay. Yeah. So you can kind of see where people are coming from yeah. as far as like what, you know, what comments they made, what kind of ideas and direction, you know, they were asking for, questions and concerns that they had. Yeah, is is in this document in a in a much easier way to understand than the spreadsheet. That right. Have. Yeah. I appreciate seeing some that some of their specific comments, even in quote form or suggestions. I thought that was really helpful because you could tell it came from people that you know maybe have more ex obviously more experience in you know their mountain bike activities or you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I I appreciate seeing that even though it probably is what made the document. So long. Yeah, it would be, but you're absolutely correct. They were very well informed comments. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very appreciated. So I just have, I have a suggestion to try to reduce theme seven <coughs> and get those stop over to theme seven, but uh, move <coughs> um, winter recreation into um, balancing recreation and preservation because it's an additional recreation. It's just moving wildfire, law enforcement, safe pedestrian crossing, infrastructure recommendations into parking and access and safety. I'm just trying to, to reduce the number of themes. I don't know if that helps at all, but if we just had one that was like parking and safety or safety, which would be parking and access and law enforcement, you know, like theme three is safety. I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to. Uh, and you know more what's in each of those contents and it may or may not work. So I'm gonna, oh, we'll take a look for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And, and move winter recreation into balancing recreation and preservation because we'll just add the noise and recreation. A lot of work went into this. Yeah, awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome job. Yeah, we're, we're hoping that it helps, right? It helps yeah. the discussions. It helps kind of like frame the, the context of like where everybody's coming from yeah. um, be, because of how important the conversations with you all, with this commission are to us. Um, it's just, a, it's just, you know, there's a ton in here. Yeah, and I'm just there's a really ton. trying to think of a way like to get people to really read it and digest it. I mean, this is really awesome. I still have this fundamental concern. This isn't a scientific. There's no scientific basis for this. I mean, it's subjective. It's, it's not subjective. It's a ask the public to show up and give us input. OK. Who shows up? Any group of people that are attached to this whole thing, and the same was going on, uh, will show up. But 10 years from now, uh, what will be the. This gives us, a, 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 I think, a, a, an overview, very big overview, but it's not scientifically based. So that you can make a decision from this. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Think of how the Open Space Commission got created because concerned individuals wanted to see open space. It wasn't because it was in science, it wasn't because there was any good research, it was because concerned individuals wanted to see open space. This is a document of concerned individuals, and this is what their concerns are or what they're what they felt. I don't know. I mean, I'm not yeah, gonna I'm just, I'm just trying to say like I I'm not to can't go with science or well, that or numbers or objective. The purchase of this property, mm -hmm. everybody didn't put the rents because the tax rates. Okay. 
What was their feeling for buying this property? We don't know that. Okay. We don't do know that um, the Trails Initiative before um, several years ago had a group of people who were assigned to be uh, monitors or overseers of certain sections of land and how it might be used. Okay. That set the framework for this because Joe Hazel was in charge long before you know, we got to this point. Yeah, no, I was in charge of what does the trail initiative see for Anderson Mesa and Observatory Mesa. And that set the direction of this. Bikes. That's what it's for. It's for no, I've never seen the observatory. I, I just yeah. metal. So no, not metal. I, I'm talking about this, the observatory Mesa. And so what we have here is a plan for biking with incidental for something else. And there's a reason that just came to my mind when I was uh, talking to Robert. How many of these trails are accessible to a hiker? How many are accessible to a family member? Are we any? Because they're spread over miles. Okay? Um, so this, what I'm seeing, and the input what I'm seeing is saying, this natural area is primarily for bike, and the trail system is primarily for bike. Well, I think I I don't know about that, but system parking and trying to get people to be able to park closer to 640 acres is probably part of, and yes. it definitely tries to address that, right? I mean, in the part, the thing is that we don't have a plan for what Lowell Observatory has, which is the yeah. most easily accessible piece. And it does have to be in contrast. So, yeah. So, yeah. even laundry, like, I, I, you know, parking and access is a hugely important part of making sure that people don't have to the wrong way to get to a park. Yeah. But I'm not sure but, we could say that this is strictly only accessible to mountain biking because there's not enough parking. I mean, that's just part of our problem. That, that, that's a problem. But again, the sign has been driven. By mountain bike. I'm not saying that's bad. What I'm saying is, does that represent the community as a whole? Do the trail system represent the community as a whole? And all the discussion here is about, well, should it be one way direction bike trails or should it be dedicated bike trails or should. It? So to me, it's about more of a Mesa recreation area for bikes. Question maybe because they could drive up to the A1 train. Uh, and maybe on the perimeter neighborhood trails, but Robert just said to me the neighborhoods didn't want trails near them because it brought too many people close to them. So uh, so I think we're working on this. I think we're gonna get a resolution sometime, but for me I, I I can't get lost in whether this trail should be for biking only or not, or whether this e bikes or not. It says nothing about right, the nature, natural area. This is a report of the concerned citizens. Of the ones that showed up in the Yeah. But not the taxpayers. Well, they're taxpayers. Not the taxpayers that funded the bond that they got before because yeah. it was so long ago. Yeah. So I think that's just a point. I think. We're not saying, like, I mean, we're not at the point where we're talking about these are the trails that would have been adopted. We're talking about this, right? How to show this information. Well, I think this is what supports the trails that we're going to adopt. It, it will support updates and changes to the existing draft of the plan. And so that draft was created after the first round of public commenting mm -hmm. last summer, correct? We have not made any, like, formal updates to the draft of the plan and we intend to do that based on these discussions and public commenting from this summer's round 
And so what we're trying to do is get a handle, like we hear a lot of things from, from the community about what they want to see, what they don't want to see, right? And so trying to, to work out what changes in the draft of the plan is something that that's the goal. That's the idea. And so these themes are kind of directing us to, to revisit, you know, that language that we have. Say, so, okay, there's no there's no language about, you know, e-bikes as an example. There's no language about e-bikes. There's one sentence that says, effectively status quo. Like what the rules are right now remain, like as far as bus trails, um, and that's it. So it doesn't, it doesn't really confront a large volume of the comments that we heard. And so we're trying to get a sense of like how, how do we want to confront that in the in the report, right? That okay. we're going to be presenting to the city council. Whether that be, you know, are we looking to put e-bikes up there on the trails, or are we looking to to say they're, that they're not going to be in a lot of use? Like the importance to the community was elevated through the comments, and so we want to make sure that that's reflected in the plan itself to show, like that we heard, you know, we heard the community, we listened, and we did. You know, a variety. We had a variety of conversations, and this is kind of where it landed. And this is what we're presenting to City Council for approval. I think my my question is, or I, I keep flopping back and forth, is what's the priority? Is this a natural area that we're trying to figure out how to recreate on safely for the environment and the wildlife and and all of that, or is the drive to have you know exciting mountain bike trails and hiking trails? And all that is it recreation or is it keeping it a natural area that we're trying to hone in on how we can recreate on it appropriately and and that would kind of you know that would put emphasis say? either way what do people know what was the dot what was the bond <laughs> we have to go back to the people what the what did the bond say yeah. you know what did, did they vote on we are giving money to the city to develop trails and recreation on Observatory Mesa, or we are giving money to maintain open space, or we're giving money to make it a wildlife area. I have no idea what the bond said, but we have to do what the bond says because that's what the money's supposed to get spent on. And of course, everything is open to interpretation. For clarity, which bond are you referring? To? The one that gave the money to spend on Observatory Mesa to buy to buy to buy the property. That's what? It was just a purchase. That that bond language was just for acquisition. So there was no language in there about what was supposed to happen and why they wanted to buy it. But don't you also have to go back to the easement from the from the Arizona the State State Parks that created it? I mean, I mean specifically, it says to ensure the property is retained in the condition reflected in the baseline documentation in the grant application. The easement also restricts the use of property to passive recreational uses. So to me, that's telling me that that's kind of the priority, what why or what it, the intent when it was established. You know, and that easement with you know the Arizona State Parks is is very telling. It, so, we're not. so that language in the easement would be very open to interpretation, just the same, because there's there was probably a statute associated with that funding or that ability to make those conservation easements. And I've seen them on all sorts of pieces of land and all sorts of different things. I'm just saying, like, the state conservation easement thing was like, a little crazy. they don't do it as so, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think you have a very good point, and I think it's really good to go back and look on the documents. If it was strictly to purchase, if people voted strictly to purchase a piece of land, acquisition, that's it. Like, then everybody was approving it for totally different reasons. Some people thought, oh, I can go biking out there. Some people thought I can go hiking out there. Some people thought well, I can camping out there. I don't, I, yeah, I, I'm probably oversimplifying it. I'm sure there, and I'm actually trying to find it or have, we can bring it back um, at a future. I'll get it from our finance director and we can bring it back. But 
Um, so that you know exactly what that said. But because it's open space, legally designated open space, does that sort of have a, you know, an overlay of protection in a way of what can and can't be done or how aggressive do we go on these trails? And well, usage? I see this like Buffalo Park, you can ride your bike around Buffalo Park. It's how you access the Arizona Trail. I mean, that's part of the bike road. There's a definition for passive recreation. Which there's no motorways. There's no there's no e-bikes on in Buffalo Park. Correct. Correct. That's the intent. That's the intent. Yeah, that's the intent. <laughs> that's the intent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it starts to just kind of. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they have a sign up that says that. I don't. It's there. Is it, it is. Yeah. Is it just on the that's it, or something? That's a whole other topic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to be a sticky wig in all of this. It's just that it seems like everything we're talking about is based on bikes. Uh, hiking, getting out there, things like that. And I talked about, but all of the stuff that comes up here is about bikes. But I can tell you, runners run out there. Well, well, you know that. They they have have for it. It. <laughs> 54 years. So um, it's not it's just been a lot of touring. That's, that's, my, that's, that. that's my point. Yeah. It, Ten years ago, there were no bikes out there. And now there are bikes all over the place out there, at least uh, in the areas close to low residential. That's the ones I know about. Um, so things have changed. But again, this is a natural area. And everything we're talking about really has to do with accommodating bikes when we're in And that's where I, I feel uneasy because I know a lot of people that would like to get out there, but they can't because parking can be close enough mm -hmm. to take a hike. Uh, I'm worried about it, but they're worried about it from uh, a mental thing, not the fact that they're out there, but they're just worried about the fact that ah, this is just turning into a white box. Uh, for, you know, that's the kind of thing I'm hearing. And it's their impression. It is there. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Because, I mean, I, that's what I don't like that. I run there. And yeah. I don't see that many bikes by too early in the morning. Um, so, uh, this is not answering any of your questions. We, <laughs> we need to move ahead. And the trails that I see that are in there, I think have 95% taken good recognition that this is a natural area and there are certain areas that need to be protected. So if I were to put a trail system in there, regardless, not thinking about the use, and wanted to avoid mine tank, wanted to avoid uh, some of these other drainage areas that I think are important for wildlife because the vegetation is totally different than the rest of the mesa, uh, I think you've done a great job at that. But now, is it available? Uh, what is, what's defining the next level, e-bikes, Single tracks, one way, just for bikes, uh, any kind of. Uh, 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 I can't think of the word. Adaptive. No, where where two kinds of uses are 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 are, are not compatible. That type of thing. Um, that's what we're discussing right now, but it's all driven by bikes. Yeah, if I could just. So you can look at that though. I think the entire drafting of the plan did up to this point have a lot of thought about mm -hmm. multiple users. Some of the tougher decisions maybe that we're making now are bike related. I think that that's a fair statement to say. But for instance, like uh, you know, you said that like hikers and bikers, hikers and walkers don't have access. This plan does look at providing additional access. Potentially with a role partnership, and then also like with that parking area on the south side of Route 66, and a new parking area on the western side for the like, western use for bikers for hybrids as well. So th this plan does provide more access for all use. Now there are some longer trails that might cater more to bicycles, but it's not. They're not just for bicycles. or runners or runners and runners. Yeah. Maybe, maybe um, that's maybe. part of the problem. 
maybe that's part of just that the focus now is getting narrower and narrower. And so it just feels like maybe we're just addressing the sticky wickets or like the, the fires. You know, we're getting exactly. to deal with it. Yeah, just stick your topics that we're looking for direction and input on. From the okay. commission. I think a lot of those are maybe more of a like, tricycle, but I don't think that the plan is exclusive. I mean, it has, has, has changed a little bit from like the first round of like public survey. We have eliminated some trails based on public comment um, from the community, and that has changed the trail system overall, I think. Or use, but I wouldn't say it's specific just for bikes. Yeah, and I, I kind of agree with Matt. Um, just in wanting to make sure that that it's truly representative of the community as a whole, and not just the community that showed up for for make comments, because that's you know a lot of local people that might be a, a minority. So I just want to, you know, kind of reiterate, I think what he's saying is just to make sure that it's representative of the whole community, not just the comments that were received from people that showed up. I think I think we're doing I I mean I don't jumped in now, but um the fact that there's adaptive anything included in there is pretty amazing. Um the fact that uh the fact that we're getting down to like the the issues that are really hot. I mean, I think that we're not hearing from the equestrian users that they're not getting what they needed. Um, I thought that the letter from the Sierra Club was pretty kind. I mean, it, you know, if we can, I have been in rooms where they have really been very frustrated with whatever was happening with the bike community, and that letter did not come across as that, yeah, not as forceful. Um, it, the problem we face is that this town is growing. There's going to be more use of conservatory Mesa than in 2004 and then even 10 years ago. I mean, I moved here 10 years ago. This town feels a lot bigger than 10 years ago. There are way more people on the trails. Did you know, I saw the stats, almost the, the same number of people from Coconino County are using our trails as people from Maricopa County. That's how many people are coming up here. 31% of the trail users over by the Y are from Coconino County. 31% Coconino County, 30% are Maricopa County. People are coming from Pima. So we have to design. We need to have recreational structure, however it looks, designated, and get rid of the trails that shouldn't be there, that are causing erosion, that are impacting those natural areas, and have a plan. And I know this is really hard for all of us to talk about, and I understand your points, absolutely. But we can't lose focus on trying to get somewhere because, well, the numbers aren't going down. And then if no one is still out, then you're going to talk to Jamie Cross because <laughs> that's the You know, like. <laughs> Right, so like this is just a, you know, we are, everyone has really good points. Everyone has really, really good points. But I think parking is going to be a great access. We really need to highlight that we've got some parking areas. It's so important. I think when I read the report where, where people started mentioning about wildlife and erosion and natural areas and able hike and you know that really I was pleased to see that I'm like okay there were people even whether they were bikers or not that they're acknowledging that um, and I find that too um, the people from out of the area on um, our trails is incredible you know mm -hmm. we always talk to people as we come upon them so many people from out of the area um, which I totally agree we need hard and fast rules and guidelines for how to recreate on our areas, especially if it's going to be open space areas that, that we're in charge of, so to speak. Um, and I know that, you know, we didn't want to talk about e-bikes, but some of these questions about trails and directions and all that, for me, it's predicated on whether an e-bike is allowed or not. Um, I'll give an example. Last month when I wasn't here, I was in Mammoth Lakes, California, tons of e-bikes. 
We even have a trolley all the way up with a, with a bike trailer in case you don't want to ride your bike back down or whatever. Um, mountain bikes, e-bikes are only allowed in Mammoth Mountain Bike Park. Um, e-bikes are only allowed on roads and they're paved, what would be the equivalent of their paved foots trail. Um, on dirt trails, hiking trails, there are no motorized whatsoever. It's hiking and regular bikes only. And they too are in a national forest like we are. So I kind of saw some similarities there on how they were handling and keeping uh, control over the explosion of motorized motorized bikes. What was the enforcement? That's a good question. I, I don't know. I mean, they had good signage for one thing, but, you know, um, on all the dirt trails that we were hiking on, I mean, there was, you know, no motorized, you know, I even took a picture of the sign for, for this meeting. But, uh, you know, but we don't have a mountain bike park here. I mean, maybe at some point Snow will allow mountain biking. It's in their master development plan for later. Um, but right now, I think we really need to hone in on how potentially abuse of our lands could be taken advantage of. And there is a bike park up at um, You're right. You're right. Yeah. Or I. Right. You, we were at three bullet points, and back home I had jotted down um, comments. The two, the last two, single use versus multi use. I think my opinion is you should let the trail, the terrain, and what the general use decide, and and not define them uh, that way. Uh, maybe a year, two years from now. Could be complaints or suggestions, and you could change it. But right now, I would not try to outguess this point. I've always said that if you want to join, design walk cement walkways in campus, don't put any down. And when you see the trails show up, then you put the concrete down. <laughs> and, and this is kind of that kind of thinking where uh, I think trail and ter the terrain will kind of begin to indicate who's going to be the major users there um, and, and, and that eventually, if it needs to be designated one way or another, it could be designated uh, as far as single use or multi use. That, that may be a term of the forehead because sometimes it's hard to take something away. Well, but th th yeah, that's a part of uh, psychology, I know, and there is one what would probably be a single use trail right next to the uh, Tunnel Springs uh, that I don't think should be there. Uh, but again, in general, I don't know how many single use trails you might think about on there. I, I think let time decide a little bit, maybe a year or two from now. And the direction of trails, it, again, when you start talking direction of trails, I think you're talking more towards expert writers and and not recreations in general. So you deciding that these trails fit a certain part of the segment that's going to be using uh, the whole mesa. And I think that is out of the norm as far as a natural area. It just it just seems like you're emphasizing something in the natural area. So th those those are my my two comments. As far as the public input synthesis, we talked quite a bit about that. Uh, I need to look at that since you've got it so nicely. I need to read it more carefully and think about it. Uh, and this conversation will continue. Next month, I mean, yeah, we are a little bit pressed for time. Yeah, I'll try to make it probably only more than a few. Oh, <laughs> Max. <laughs> no, no, I just. No, these are really good conversations. Yeah. I think that I think you're getting lots of viewpoints just from your own commission. No, that was the goal. Yeah, yeah. that's what that's what we're looking for. Well, eventually, we'd love to have consensus. <laughs> we have a consent. True. Yeah. On a recommendation for us to take the city council. But 
We can also express to city council that there was much discussion and. Oh, you want to take this? You just like this is a hard way. To, well, you know, not that. Not that. It would be like the, the trail plan. Yeah. To which, the city council. When we're ready to take the trail plan to the council for adoption or to at least start discussing adoption, we would love to be able to say that the commission discussed e-bikes and this was their recommendation. Or they discussed single use trails and this was their recommendation. And then the council can decide But I think it's important for them to know what this commission discussed and landed on. I think you all are having that really hard conversations. Council will have some of that, um, but I think they'll rely on this commission's recommendations quite a bit. And that puts a lot of re <coughs> responsibility of us individually to try to put the minds in the place of a biker or in the place of this or in the place of that. And in the place of, of Robert, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, so there's there's a couple ways that we could approach, and this is looking way forward and we're not there. So when we're looking at going to the city council, you know, we, we would hope to have a letter from the commission stating what you support. If the commission cannot get to support on something like directional trails, we would document that and we would say, these were the concerns stated by some of the commissioners where we did not achieve full consensus on this issue. And so don't think that we, you have to be in full agreement. We wanna make sure that those things are like documented well and that the, the council has the full picture of the discussions that you all had. We still are hoping for your letter of support, um, even if it looks like we love it, except for this, 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 and this. I think you're it, 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 can, it can say that that's okay because that's that's, valuable context for the council to consider as they're listening to to the presentation and the discussion as well. When what the it's not scheduled. I, yeah. You're gonna get a letter of support from this commission, right? And we're here, Commissioner Fox. But um yeah. for me, part of the issue is I haven't seen this on the ground. So like when we talk about like is that something we can put in the letter? Like there has been a discussion about this point. You know, a, a decision can be made about directional or single direction, multi-directional or single directional trails because it was really hard to envision. You know what? I mean, I can see it on the map, but I don't have the topography. I mean, I don't. Are we only responding to what this these responses are from the public, or is there any chance to ever like? see it there for real like uh, you said you know like there's no flagging there's no like we don't i know what all the trails are that are out i don't know all the trails that are out there but i know a lot of these trails that you want to decommission i know where those ones are and why i don't know i'm just wondering if that's something that people would go in the letter where it's like we just have to respond exactly what these respondents i think we can do a field is it i think Locking every single alignment. <laughs> no, no, but what about the ones that are coming? What about these hot ones? Like, what yeah. about these? You know, this is where we would talk about putting in a 36 inch tread for adaptive cycling. Just this little part right here. This is a road that we're going to leave this wide so that people can walk two or four abreast so they can have a conversation. This is the location where we want to avoid this natural space. So we're talking about putting this route over here and decommissioning that. I mean, I don't know. I Yeah. I, Tunnel Springs would be wonderful. I mean, that's that's where all the things that you just mentioned are between the like bottom of the hill and the top of the hill. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how the rest of you feel about it, but that sort of like I know this is frustrating for you guys. But if you want to like I don't know, like it's really coming from me. It's hard to just work off yeah, I guess it might be beneficial at some point. Yeah, I mean, especially if we if we don't really have a time time limit. Well, we have a winter limit. Right uh, we have a winter limit. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you go on a snowy day when it needs to see the ground. We bought we bought a snowshoe. Or just or whatever. <laughs> I think before snow might be good. <laughs> I don't know. Is that is that? I, oh, I would love that. I would love that. Yeah. 
I, mean, I think we and like to look at the new parking area or something like we're going to put a parking area here. We can see the community around it that's going to benefit from having access, better access. I mean, that's a note that I hope you put down. That is parking that provides access to hikes. You have parking down in 66. They have to walk all the way up the top of that hill. And then maybe they'll go another mile. Right. That doesn't cover a heck of a lot of area. And then they have to come back again. Uh, I still do. It would be nice to have the low, okay, and have a parking lot right there in the low land or even in, on this section above it. But um, I think the connection between having this a multi use area is parking this access to pedestrians, basically. Um, convenient access. I mean, we have access, but is it convenient? Or legal. Need legal access. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're, we're past six o'clock here. So, yeah. Um, Thank you so much. The, uh, you. Let's uh, just run through real quick what's left. Um, it's no win. This uh, council member Harris is not online. Uh, planning and zoning. Do you have any? I don't really have anything. Okay. Open so space. Are you having to report me? Uh, we listed all of the notes. But there's a question for us. Okay. Um, future agenda items were listed. Any uh, commissioners have any items they want to see on the future agenda? Future. Future. Right. So noted. All right. And next is the adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right. And a second. A second. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? All right. Any opposed? We're adjourned. All right. Okay. <laughs> I think that Robert had a really good point. I mean, the reason this report went back out, the reason they did a second survey is because they didn't see specific questions which came up. So I think that that's really important that 